Hello and welcome to Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you aware and informed on everything that's happened in the world of Faith and Family Films. Now, before COVID hit, uh, I'm going to say about almost a year ago, uh, I was attending all kinds of film festivals and, you know, and, uh, uh, conferences. And there was one that uh, the founder of the film festival wrote me and said, you, you've got to come to our film festival. Um, I had never heard of it, but it was in Branson. And I thought, I'd love to go to Branson. So I did. And I have to tell you, I'm very impressed with what this film festival has become. And the, uh, the founder of it, of course, uh, is, is very impressive to me. And that's why I have her on the show today. Uh, Deborah Watson spent 12 years as the founder director of an international nonprofit organization, Faith Walkers International. During that time, she wrote, produced, and directed several theatrical productions, as well as assisted others in developing their stories for productions in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, after a visit with some friends in the Los Angeles area, she decided to cross over into screenplay writing. She is now in the process of developing 10 full, did I read that right? 10 full features? Wow, 10 full features that she has written. Deborah, <clears throat> welcome hey, to yeah. Faith on Film. Now, you should come out again. It's really nice and warm outside, like a balmy 29. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how you guys do that. I did live in New York for seven years where it was always just freezing during the winter. Uh, and I just don't know now how I even did that. Now, did I read that right? You're working on developing 10 full features right now? Um, yes. Yeah, so some of them, of course, are on the back burner. You know, so it was kind of my retirement plan because if one full feature takes approximately three years, that planned out my life from 50 to 80. So <laughs> it felt very, very comfortable for me. But um, evidently the Lord has different plans and um, we're helping others develop theirs as well. So I'm not wow. really focusing on the 10 as much as I am the one right in front uh -huh. of me. So. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, before we even get into that one, how about you share with us how you even got involved in filmmaking? Yeah, sure. So um, it was a childhood dream. Mm -hmm. um, I got to watch the Miss America pageant with my mom when I was eight years old. And I was just so impressed because back then, you know, the cameras were like that big <laughs> and you could see them moving around on the screen. And uh, I was like, wow, I want to be part of that. I want to do that. And my mom was very loving and kind and compassionate, okay. and she was looking at it from the perspective of um, walking the runway, not producing. And so she lovingly told me, Deborah, um, you're never going to be able to do something like that, so you need to come up with a better plan. And so I was like, <sighs> oh, well, I can't do that. So I just kind of shelved it. And that gift has been inside of me and that desire has been inside of me all these years and came out in different ways. And so when um, we were with our youth group um, on a weekend getaway, and I felt like I was supposed to write my first one with Faith Walkers, I cried, Isaac, like I was so scared. And my youth pastor's like, you need to stop crying about it and start writing. <laughs> and so the rest is history. Um, you know, when we went to LA, I, I was like, this Lord, this can't be you. You know, it just seems too big for me. Um, wow. And if it really is you, Jesus, you're going to have to be with me every single step of the way. And so while we were flying from St. Louis to LAX and in a three seat capacity, my husband, I was next to the window praying and my husband was sitting next to a soldier um, that was on his way back to Afghanistan. And um, he was sharing with us that his mom had just passed away and she was his last pillar of faith. And he didn't know what he was going to do while he was out on the battlefield. So I asked him if we could pray for him, kind of like stand in parents, so to say. And he's like, yes, please. So I get out my little pen and paper and I go to write down his name. And I said, so what's your name? And he's like, Jesus Garcia. I was like, do you spell that J-E-S-U-S? -S? And he said, yes, ma'am. And so the rest is kind of history. I, I'm not going to argue with the Lord's plan for my life. So. Wow. You know, that's one interesting thing about uh, Latin America versus uh, the United States is we actually can be named Jesus. <laughs> It'd be kind of weird here, huh? Uh, yeah, my name is Jesus. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but that's, that's, uh, that just seems to be the case. Now, um, you know, it, I've interviewed about 75 people, I think, already for this show. And the story seems to be very similar, that they really had that inkling 
to uh, produce films since they were kids, and yet the majority kind of didn't go there uh, in the beginning. They, they diverted into something else, but eventually just got right back in there. Seems like that was the same case for you, huh? Yeah, it really was. I mean, because the magnitude of what it takes to do what we do, as you know, is pretty colossal. Um, but if you just, you know, handle that one step at a time mm -hmm. and take one step at a time instead of 10 full features all at once, <laughs> the job can be done a lot better. So Right, yeah. Well, you know, I've, I've always felt like God's calling does come to us from very, very, very early. Um, and for whatever reason, sometimes we decide to go to a different direction. But it seems like God always pulls us right back in because he has a job that he's intended for us to do. do. Would you agree? Is this something that you feel God wants you to do rather than just something you love? Yeah. If it was something I liked, it would be a hobby and mm -hmm. it would just be doing something locally. Um, because as you know, what it takes to get to the level we need to right. be at is hard work. Oh, yeah. And yeah, so I just, it's one of those things when it's a passion inside of you, you just keep pushing forward. Yeah. Um, do what you got to do. So. so hard work, sometimes a lot of disappointments. Uh, but if you do focus on the fact that uh, this is God's calling, then you just press on and, and eventually you succeed. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing, too, is our pastor in St. Louis taught us something very mm -hmm. early on is delayed does not mean denied. Right. And COVID definitely put that to test. And the other thing, too, is especially with faith, you know, there's a season for everything. And if we avoid and ignore those grassroots moments of being underground, so to say, and learning and developing and honing in right. on the magnitude of what needs to be done, and we just try to like plow through to the top, um, we're going to fail and we got to give mm -hmm. ourselves permission to fail and to not be perfect um, right. because none of us are. Um, but that's part of the growth process too. So. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to take a break right now, but when we come back, let's talk about not the 10, let's talk about that one that you seem to be really pushing for right now, right? Sounds great. All right, folks, don't go away. We're going to be right back. Encourage TV, family-friendly and faith-friendly content, absolutely free. Subscribe today and watch hundreds of hours of content on our streaming channels. Visit EncourageTV.com today. Seriously, how big was it? I'm telling you, it's humongous. So it was bigger than a castle? Totally. And when you're there, there's so many cool things to do that you forget about time. No way. That only happened to one place. Go ahead, think bigger. today with Deborah Watson who has 10 movies she's developing okay so she's not working on all of them those are for the future but she is working very uh, very strongly on one right now Deborah 
Can you tell us all about this film that you're working on? Uh, that I know, as a matter of fact, I'm very proud to say that I am involved with you on this film. You know, your feedback this last time really meant the world to me. So, and um, it's definitely a personal experience for me. It's called Not Too Far From Here. Mm -hmm. And it's dealing with domestic violence through the eyes of a teenage girl. And it was honestly birthed out of um, not my own personal experience of domestic violence, but knowing and understanding what true love really is like. Mm -hmm. And when we moved from St. Louis to Branson, we actually had three friends, um, close friends that experienced um, domestic violence. Um, two of them were high profile cases. One of them, she was a nurse at the hospital and she did everything correctly, um, but her um, soon-to-be ex-husband still took her life. Mm. And out of that, the family built Mary's House of Hope. And fast forward the hands of time, they were still trying to build shelters because it's expensive to build right. a quality shelter and to run it. And so I was like, Lord, what can I possibly do? And that whole fish and loaves thing, you know, what can I do when I don't have a lot and I have the gift of storytelling? And I thought, oh, I can take this one idea and Put it into the Lord's hands and let mm -hmm. him multiply it. And so um, one of the people here locally, um, her name's Kim Boyce Kariba. I don't know if a lot of you guys were huge fans of hers back in the late 80s, early 90s. She was around with Sandy Patty, Amy Grant right. on That's the radio a, station. I think I was um, a baby right around then. I Not think you were. You might need to check with your parents or something. <laughs> So she actually lives in the Branson, Missouri area. And okay. so I reached out to her because she had, um, she has been an influencer in my life on many different levels. And so she said, you know, it's really interesting that you would ask me this because I literally just got a copy of my book, not too far from here in the mail today. And it's talking about moving from hurt to hope and the power of forgiveness. And that is the heartbeat of our film. And so we're doing a partnership with her on that, where we include her book in um, the film where they're doing a study of these women that have been victims of domestic mm -hmm. violence that are trying to learn how to move forward and move on. And Isaac, it's been very powerful because people have been reading the book. In fact, if your listeners want to check it out, it's on Amazon. Okay. Um, but they found things hidden away way back when in their past that they had not forgiven somebody for and were able to move forward in their lives. And so to be able to have that as part of the film project has been a real huge blessing. Oh, wow. So can are you able to tell us kind of where you are in the process at this point? Yeah, so we've got Kevin Sorbo on board as director. Oh, nice. Yes, and because of COVID, um, we had to get creative with filming. Um, so we're including his whole entire family. Mm -hmm. and. Um, we're doing that with several different people. We have um, somebody who's in a Netflix series right now that we are wanting to hire as our lead, um, but we need to get budget in. And so we've done a partnership with the Great Passion Play down in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. They have over 600 acres and they have um, different property, kind of like Capernaum Studios down mm -hmm. in Dallas. Yeah, um, They've got a place designed where if we wanted to do biblical stories, we can but they have um, RV parks, um, parking space there. They have a hotel there. They have um, this great big, huge cafeteria style place. We can do craft services. Um, they have two hostel, hostel rooms that have 18 beds on it. So we're able to quarantine and be compliant with um, the SAG rules and regulations and keep everybody healthy and safe. Um, so we're just, we're at the funding stage now. Um, that we're looking for um, investors to help us just really launch this this right. um, project. Yeah, you know that's so. the that's the neat thing about doing projects that, in reality, it's it's a it's an assignment from God. Let's say, and that is that He provides. You know, uh, the, the, there's a scripture that I love that says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness, yeah. and all these things will be added unto you." Um, I've always felt, it's my opinion, that. If you do what you're doing, if, if you if you have to do a film, but you're doing it for kingdom building purposes, as opposed, you know, and I'm talking about God's kingdom, not my kingdom. But if you do it for God's kingdom building purposes, He's going to provide all that is necessary. All these things will be added unto you. What? 
Well, uh, all the things that you mentioned today seem like some things that would be added that are going to help with the, with the cost, actually, and, uh, you know, make, make it a little easier. I'm not going to say it's going to make it completely easy, but it will make it a little easier for you to, to produce yeah. what you need to produce. I, well, and Isaac, I know you've been to our region, and mm -hmm. one of the things that I love about Branson is the community itself is so faith-driven right. and so, like, like we're a family. Um, the thing is, though, with family, they all volunteer. Volunteer. They'll work for pizza and peanuts and bottled water. And I don't want to be that kind of business. I want to uh -huh. be able to pay them fair market salary. That's wonderful. And um, to do that, I got to level up. And so it's worth the wait to be able to provide that for the local people that will be on board on the project. Um, that does that mean it got d delayed because of COVID, because of funding? Yes. But I would rather pay quality yeah. um, people that can do their job. Because there's over 200 filmmakers down here. But they're oh, all wow. leaving the region to go do work because there's not any pay down here. And that has to change for our region. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just really honored to be able to be that person along with a couple, two or three other people that are here um, that have that same vision to be able to do that and pay them what they're worth instead of peanuts and pizza and... <laughs> Well, listen, let's take another break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about the other thing that you do. And this is how I met you. And that would be that film festival. I don't know if that's taken a back seat for you personally or if you're still gung-ho about the film festival. But uh, we're going to find out a little bit about that when we come back. All right? Sounds great. So, folks, stay tuned because we got so much more with Deborah Watson here on Faith on Film. YBL is an experience like none other. Whether you are thinking about a call into leadership and ministry or something else. I would do it again in a heartbeat. I learned a lot about having self-confidence in myself as a leader. Even though we're teenagers, we still have the power and the capacity to change the world. God can do amazing things in a very short amount of time. The material that we studied and the activities that we did really helped us to see that. Going to YBL and hearing from professors that are my future professors and professors now, coming to Asbury is really like a continuation of what Youth Becoming Leaders was. It was really important having a group of people my age who wanted to do what I wanted to do. We kind of end up as a family, which is the best thing I think about YBL. And Deborah, you're going to tell us all about the film festival uh, that you uh, have been holding for, what is it, like three years now in Branson? Yeah, we're getting ready. Um, in fact, we just closed off submissions on Film Freeway for year four. So I'm really excited. It's the Branson International Film Festival. Mm -hmm. and we had This year we had 264 submissions. Oh, wow. And we included scripts this year. So we got some really good scripts that got submitted. I know one of the things that really impressed me on that first one because was, was that you had people from all over the world actually come. I mean, it wasn't a lot of people, but it was people. That I remember this uh, this group from Greece. Was it Greece? Yeah, there was five of them that came from Athens, Greece, and one of them came back year two, 
And he is actually um, writing some music for the film of the project that I'm working on not too far from here. Um, he's writing the music and gonna go, he's going to score that for us. Oh, um, and wow. he's talking about coming back to the festival this year, even with COVID. So it just depends on the, the flight requirements and stuff. So. Yeah, I imagine that uh, that can have a, an effect on all this, and it has had on, on several of the conferences that I attend. So is the plan right now to still have it be an actual live event, or is it a virtual event? Yeah, so um, this last year, 2020, we learned um, the hard way with everybody else. Um, COVID lockdown happened four weeks before festival. And so we decided at that time not to cancel, postpone, like a lot of the other mm -hmm. ones were doing how to move forward virtually. And so this year we've decided to do, because like we were expecting like 250 people to come, but we had over 7,111 viewers. And so we've decided for this year, we're going to do um, kind of both because our facility can only okay. hold 200 people with their compliancy to the COVID rules and regulations. And we actually have seven different international, what we're calling hubs where um, like in Nigeria, if people want to be part of the film festival, they can go to Paul's facility there in Nigeria and participate there. Oh. And we're gonna live stream out. Interesting. We'll still have live stream available from the comfort of people's homes. Right. Um, but we're creating a unique feature, so. Hmm. Now, I'm gonna be there live, right? I sure hope so. <laughs> I, do, I do plan to, absolutely. Um, although I got to tell you, this this virtual thing is really working very well. We have a I'm part of an organization called ICVM, International Visual Christian Media, and this year we did have to do it virtually, but um, it was amazing. We ended up getting a lot more people from overseas that normally would not be able to come because it does get expensive to you know come over from other you know, from the other side of the pond, if you will, and. Uh, and then stay here in hotel and all that. So we had a lot of people that joined in. So it, it, it became, uh, to me, I think it actually worked out real well. It opened a lot of doors. And it's interesting, too, because the one, um, Chris Meragudagis that came from Athens, mm. I actually asked him because I've flown internationally and you have, so you know it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And so I cornered him one day and said, hey, let's, let's just have a for real conversation. And the cost for him to come to film festival is three months salary. Oh gosh. And I just kind of let that sink uh, in yeah. with all the festival opportunities I have to go to. It's like, mm -hmm. and I complain about a hundred dollar ticket, you know, it kind of put me in check as to how much am I willing to invest, not in the film festival, but invest in myself while I'm at the film festival. Cause mm -hmm. that's why, that's why they came is they knew that it was going to be a good investment for them and right. their business. So I had to really like flip that switch in my brain and say, okay, so what's good for business and to what magnitude am I willing to invest mm -hmm. in my own business by going to the film festivals and partnering up with the people there? Cause as you know, you get to meet people like you yeah. and I met and like I met with Chris and there's, there's amazing people in the industry that have good quality um, skills. And if we all just would come together and work together, that's, that's where the magic happens. Yeah. It does open up some great opportunities for, for people, isn't it? Yeah. And I've discovered here locally, it's kind of a lack of knowledge that the local people didn't know that they could come, even though we're inviting them and, right. and opening the doors for them. So this year, what we've done is um, partnered up with Stephen um, Zambo at Salty Earth okay. Pictures. Oh yeah. I know Stephen. Yeah, and we're using the author, the star, and the keeper that literally it almost got the Agape Award at, at last year's. Right. It missed it by two tenths of votes. I'm like, oh, oh. man, <laughs> so close. Um, but he's given us permission to use it, and we're going to hold a pastor's gala event Terrific. where we're inviting the pastors and their wives to come and watch the film so they can get a taste of what is being shown at the film festival and just let them um, educate them because Excellent. they if they don't know they're not going to go all right so we decided you know what let's just educate them on what a film festival well, truly is for the local community well again and for this for this festival how would people find out about it do they also go to the same website uh, that you, you're using for the film oh sure no they want to go to bransonfilmfestival.com we okay. have a different people working there so okay that's how 
able to be an octopus and do many things because I have some really great people come alongside of us. So, well, thank you so much for joining us today for this program. Uh, really, you know, enjoyed talking with you. I haven't seen you in I'm going to say a couple of years now because of this COVID thing. Obviously, took away that that this last yeah. one. Uh, but it was great seeing you uh, via via Zoom right now, uh, and I look you forward too. to being there for the for the film festival this year. All right. Yes, sounds wonderful. We'll see you in about three and a half months. Sounds good, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Encourage TV. Family-friendly and faith-friendly content absolutely free. Subscribe today and watch hundreds of hours of content on our streaming channels. Visit EncourageTV.com today. Dad? This is a lot of work. It, it might take us the entire weekend. You think this is rough? Try building one of the most massive wooden ships in history without modern tools. Go ahead. Think bigger. Back to Faith on Film. I really enjoyed my time with Deborah today. Uh, I do want to remind you that you can write me, uh, simply write me at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. You can also follow me, of course, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. That's at Faith on film tv and don't forget to check out parables tv a place where you can watch all kinds of great movies documentaries reality shows children's shows just a lot of good clean healthy content for you and your family all you got to do is go to parables.tv that's parables.tv and sign up for free entertainment well until next week take care